making headlines tonight. Uma Oya protest. President admits to failings at Uma Oya and assures remedies. First at nine. This is Other Verena 24-7. Poster strike. Workers continue strike for a third day without forthcoming solution. Anti-Sitem protests for university staged demonstrations. GMOA warns of another strike. Local government elections. Patrol warns elections will take a further 12 months. And in sports headlines, Zimbabwe tour of Sri Lanka. Skipper Matthews says team focused on consistency. Good evening and a warm welcome to your prime time news at 9. I'm Indivri Amuatha. We start off with your prime time local news. The People Action for Free and Fair Elections says that the government's proposal to reduce the number of electoral wards is a challenging task. But we start off with the ongoing postal strike. The indefinite strike launched by the United Postal Trade Unions Front continued for a third day today. The strike, which has caused much inconveniences, prompted the University Grants Commission to extend the deadline for university student registration for the academic year 2016 to 2017 until the 7th of July. Meanwhile, police announced a grace period of a week to pay traffic fines due to delays caused by the postal strike. Postal employees launched an indefinite strike on the 26th of this month based on three demands. They call for the abolishment of the alleged decision taken by the government to build hotels at properties with existing post offices in Uvarelia, Candy and Gore Fort. They also demand the establishment of the main post office along Janadipati Mavata Fort and to solve administrative issues brought on by the Circular 6 of 2006. As a result, several post offices, including the Central Mail Exchange in Colombo, was closed today as well. United Postal Trade Unions Front says that 655 main post offices and over 3,400 sub-post offices are currently engaged in the strike. The public was severely inconvenienced due to the disruption of postal services. මම බැංකු වලට සල්ලි දාන්න තියෙන අපේ ලීසින් තියෙන වාහන වල මේ වගේ ඩියුම් මොනවත් එන්නේ නැහැ අපි අසරණ නේ මේ ප්‍රශ්න නිසා ඊළඟට මේ බැංකු වලින් ප්‍රශ්නයක් වෙන්න අපි නේ නැ වෛද්‍ය වර්ජන තැපැල් වර්ජන රේල්වේ වර්ජන මේ සියලුම වර්ජන වලින් සාමාන්‍ය ජනතාව බිල් එකට ගන්න උපත් අපි තමයි ඒකෙන් සැලෙන්නේ තැලෙන්නේ ඉෂුවින් අ රිලීස් ටුඩේ ද පොලිස් හෙඩ් ක්වොටර්ස් එක්ස්ටෙන්ඩඩ් ද ඩෙඩ් ලයින් ටු සෙටල් ට්‍රැෆික් ෆයින්ස් බයි අ වීක් ඉන් වියු ඔෆ් ද පෝස්ටල් ස්ට්‍රයික් Furthermore, drivers can settle fines at divisional secretariats and forward the receipts to respective police stations. Meanwhile, the University Grants Commission has decided to extend the deadline for university student registration for academic year 2016 to 2017 till the 7th of July. The decision was reached subsequent to not having received an unusually high number of applications prior to the due date, which falls tomorrow. Secretary of the Ministry of Education at the Sabaragamal Provincial Council, Mahinda Veera Surya, says that appointment letters for graduate teachers could not be delivered prior to the designated date due to the postal strike. As a result, measures have been taken to announce the appointments online. He added that successful candidates will be able to collect their letters of appointment at the ministry. Well, the People's Action for Free and Fair Elections says that the government's proposal to reduce the number of electoral wards from 8,000 to 4,500 and to hold local government elections soon seems contradictory. The executive director of PAFRAL, Rohana Hetiarachi, at a media briefing today proposed that the government should go for changes that can be approved within parliament. Honorable Lakshman Kirihala made a statement that they are going to reduce 8,000 members to 4,500. And at the same time, they are stating that they are going to have elections soon. This is a very contradicted statement. You can't have a soon elections if you are going to reduce the 
number of wards. So altogether, four years taken to delimitations according to the new local government system. In any case, if party decide to reduce the number, at least it will take one year's time. So you can't have a sooner elections with this situation. And also we analyze proportions, then we realize the vote base we will get 58%. And also the proportional representations, we will get 42% according to this, the new uh, electoral system. For example, in the Colombo municipality, vote base 66 members will be elected. And PR proportions for 19 people and also women uh, representations 28. So altogether 47. 66 to 47 mean 58 to 42%. So it's clear now PR proportions will get up to 42%. So there is no point to discuss or change again uh, 60 to 40 because it's already 42 we have with the proposed system because now this the technical issues are in the parliament we wish to propose the parliament uh, parliamentarian and also the political party leaders to consider abolish this cutoff point there is a cutoff point uh, in the uh, upcoming local government system so it is uh, stated at as a five five percent so there are minor parties who are getting in island wide some parties are less than five percent some parties are around five percent so if we abolish this, all the minor parties, according to their vote base, they will get a fair chance to represent the local authorities level. And also, the voter registrations for 2017 is already on now. We wish to appeal all the political, all the voters in the country, if you are not get the BC form, kindly uh, meet your Gramila Dhari and get the form and fulfill and hand over it to the, your relevant Gramila Dhari. If Gramila Dhari is already hand over their document to the Elections Commission, still you have right to send it to the Assistant Elections Commission or a Deputy Elections Commissioner in a respective district, then you can get your registration. Because this is very important, in the 2017 uh, voter registration will be used for next uh, upcoming uh, local elections and also the uh, provincial elections. In any case, if there is a referendum, that also will be used by 2017 registration. And two new ministers were sworn in this morning at the Northern Provincial Council before Governor of the Northern Province, Reginald Kure. Kandaya Sarveswaran was sworn in as the Minister of Education, while Ananti Satiswaran took oaths as the Minister of Women's Affairs. An investigation into alleged corruption at the Northern Provincial Council found two of its ministers to be guilty. Two new ministers were sworn in before Governor of the Northern Province, Reginald Kure replaced the Minister of Agriculture P. Aingaranesan and Minister of Education T. Kurukula Raja. Meanwhile, Chief Minister C. V. Vigneswaran took measures to take over the Ministry of Agriculture and Agrarian Service. Anandi Sasadharan was appointed as Minister of Women's Affairs, Rehabilitation, Social Services, Cooperatives, Food Supply and Distribution, industry and enterprise promotion. Meanwhile, Kandaya Sarveswaran was sworn in as the Provincial Minister of Education, Sports and Youth Affairs and Cultural Affairs. Chief Minister Vigneswaran took oaths as the Northern Province Minister of Finance and Planning, Law and Order, Lands, Energy, Housing and Construction, Tourism, Local Government, Provincial Administration, Agriculture and Agrarian Service, Animal Husbandry, Irrigation, water supply and environment. The two new ministers who took over today had pledged their allegiance to the chief minister when the no confidence motion was brought against him by a majority of Northern Provincial Council members. And President Maitripala Sirisena says the government expects to seek assistance from foreign specialists on the Uma Oya project. The head of the state made the remarks today at an event held in Norelia. The ceremony to mark the 125th anniversary of Highlands College in Uvarelia was held under the patronage of President Maitri Pala Sirisena at the DKW Viratunga Cultural Center in Hatton. <laughs> ये विशाल परिसर सहबागित उद्गोष ने अतिबुना व माध्य तुल देख का बंडार रहेला ये उबाव ये व्याप्रति निशा जनता आठ विलादी में हिरहर निशा ये व्याप्रति आरंभ करवेत पाहुगी आंडू इंजीनियरों रुंगे उपदेश प्रतीक्षे पकड़ला तमाई 
ඒ ව්‍යාපෘතිය දේශපාලන තීන්දුව අරගෙන කෙරුවේ උමාවය මම ජනාධිපති වෙලා 2015 ජනවාරි මාසේ බැලුවා ඒ ව්‍යාපෘතිය කටයුතු නවත්තන්න පුළුවන්ද කියලා නමුත් ඒ වෙන විට ව්‍යාපෘතියෙන් තුනෙන් දෙකක් කටයුතු කිරීගෙන අවසන් වෙලා තියෙනවා ඒ වගේම විශාල නයක් ඉරානෙන් අපේ ආණ්ඩුව අරගෙන තිබුණා ඒ නිසා ප්‍රශ්න තිබුණා කරගෙන යන්න සිද්ධ වුණා මේ ප්‍රශ්නයට මම ප්‍රධාන වශයෙන්ම විශේෂඥවරු පහුගිය සතියේ කැඳෙව්වා විදේශීය විශේෂඥවරු ජර්මන් රටේ විශේෂඥයෙක් මම उमाय मे पीली बंद पर्यशन करीट प्रधान वाशेम लोके हम इंजीनियर इन नोवे प्रश्न पीली बंद बल नोवे रजे इली मकल तव सती की पेकिन नोर्वे रजे विशेष खंडा मे नो मे उमाय व्यापृति अद्यने मम पौजलिक मे व्यापृति अस्मेन्तुपवाहिता वरदी विधि ऐन सा मम बलापुरु ना मेघन विनम पर्यशन करे संबंधे President Siri Sena later made an inspection tour of Tamil College in Kottagala to look into the standards of education. Former President Mahinda Rajapaksa charges that people are gradually losing their freedom under the present government. He expressed these views in response to questions raised by media following a religious event held in Colombo last evening. महाजन दिन महाजन दिन शिष्य and the government medical officers association says that they will continue to protest until the government vests sitem in the public convening a media briefing today gmoa officials said that the central working committee of the association decided to launch their next strike without prior notification The GMOA working committee decided today that the government should finalize their stance on sitem by vesting the institution on the public. The committee also agreed to coordinate with all public forces against sitem. Furthermore, the GMOA said that the final decision of the date for an indefinite strike will be decided by the central working committee. The secretary of the government medical officers association Dr Harita Aludge said that the GMOA held an official discussion with the president and accused minister Raj the Sena Ratna of labeling it as a secret discussion furthermore Dr Aludge accuses that minister Sena Ratna is attempting to remove professor Carlo Fonseca as the chairman of the Sri Lanka Medical Council He also stated that the GMOA will take legal action against Dr Neville Fernando for threatening medical doctors by lodging a complaint with the IGP. With issues surrounding Saitam showing no signs of abating, several protests were held today as well, demanding that the government close down the private medical college. <laughs> Medical faculty students of the Colombo University engaged in a protest this morning adjacent to the medical faculty of the university. All Island Doctors Union and Medical Faculty Lecturers Association also joined hands with the university students. Meanwhile, medical faculty lecturers of the University of Ruhna engaged in a silent protest campaign in front of the university's medical faculty. Furthermore, the Students Federation of the University of Kalania also protested, demanding the government to abolish sitem and to release university students whom were arrested last week. The Students Council of the Vaimbe University also engaged in a protest march today. It commenced from the campus premises and reached the Kuliapitiya town where they continued the protest. We'll return with your top business stories after this short break.
The national organizer of the All Island Farmers Federation says that the president Maitripala Sirisena assured to address their issues which include having to dispose of milk production on a daily basis. He said this addressing media following a meeting at the presidential secretariat today. All Island Farmers Federation organized a protest on the 25th of this month in Dambulla claiming that dairy farmers had to face numerous difficulties. They also accused certain politicians of fraudulently keeping imported dairy cows. A spokesperson of the presidential secretariat informed the protesters that a meeting with the president will be granted on the 29th. Accordingly, national organizer of All Island Farmers Federation, Namal Karunaratna, participated in a meeting held at the presidential secretariat today. Addressing media following the discussion, he said that a meeting was scheduled with the president, dairy farmers, intermediate parties and industrialists to provide a solution to the issue. A tense situation erupted in Mutarajavela when area residents protested for a second day against garbage dumping in the area. With this story and more in time, now we take a look at other stories making news from across Sri Lanka. Residents of Muturajavela protested against dumping garbage at a private land in Ratna Bopitiya in Muturajavela for the second day today. Garbage, however, continued to be disposed in the area amidst protests with the intervention of police. Deputy Minister of Home Affairs Nimal Lanza arrived at the location to inspect the situation. Politicians and seven professionals were present at the public commission established to formulate national policy on international trade agreements for a ninth day today to provide their suggestions. Speaking at the commission, leader of the National Freedom Front, Vimal Viravamsa says that the government should create the necessary legal framework to prevent the government from signing international trade agreements without the approval of parliament. The launch of the second round of the Green Energy Champion Sri Lanka was held in Colombo today with the participation of Deputy Minister of Power and Energy Ajit P. Pereira and German Ambassador to Sri Lanka and Maldives John Road. The competition intends to inspire Sri Lankans to generate tangible ideas on how to use renewable energy in their environment. This year's Green Year Champion will be awarded with technical equipment worth 10 million rupees and technical expertise for implementation. Oil prices rose to a two-week high today, extending a rally into a sixth straight session after a decline in weekly U.S. production eased concerns about deepening oversupply. Crude prices slipped to the lowest in 10 months last week, but have since rebounded more than 7 percent. Global benchmark Brent crude futures were up 43 cents at $47.74 a barrel, having touched a two-week high of $47.98 earlier in the session. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude was up $0.40 cents at $45.14 a barrel. It registered an intraday high of $45.38, also a two-week peak. U.S. government data show that domestic crude production dropped by around 40 or rather 100,000 barrels per day to 9.3 million barrels per day last week, the steepest weekly fall since July last year. And at the Colombo Bowls today, equities closed the session in green amid low market activity. The all share price index closed 5.45 to close trading at 6,702, while the SNPSL 20 index shed about 3,903 with a gain of 4.75. Foreign investors in the meantime continued to be on the buying side and net foreign inflows continued or amounted to about 22 million rupees today. However, foreign participation was a mere 46 percent of turnover. We now have the daily market update with Imeshi Fernando from the Colombo Stock Exchange. Top five gainers of the day were PC House, PC Pharma, Amana Takaful, Bearable Resorts, and Kalani Cables. While the top five losers were Udapusel Lava Plantation, Union Chemicals, Renuka Capital, SNB Leasing, and Hikadu Beach Resort.
And now we move into a quick short break to stay with us. We start off with cricket. OD, the five-match ODI series between Zimbabwe and Sri Lanka will kick off at the Gaul International Cricket Stadium tomorrow. The series carries great significance as the two countries are set to contest on Sri Lankan soil after 15 years. Speaking to media, captain of the Sri Lanka cricket team, Angelo Matthews, said that the team is focused on consistency. I think especially in, in this, the, the batters, I think we had a couple of injuries. Kapu was injured when, uh, when we came to select the team and also a couple of guys who missed out. But if you look at the, the six batters, they, they, all, they all played in the Champions Trophy. You know, that is what, you know, as I said before, we are looking at consistency and we will try and improve that as well in the future. But fielding is, is an individual thing as well. We work a lot. If you, if you had a look at the last two training sessions as well, the boys are sweating it out so much with, with regards to fielding because we give very, you know, very much importance to fielding as well. So we work extremely hard, you know, the odd, odd one or two catches will be dropped anyway in the future as well because no one goes to a game thinking to drop a catch, but, you know, unfortunately, we do mistake. Kusal Pereira is, is out for the whole, whole series. Uh, the, the physio says it's 8 to 12 weeks, if I'm not mistaken, but he's also touch and go for the Indian series. So uh, uh, we'll, ha we'll have to closely, you know, monitor him. In tennis, defending champion Andy Murray has ruled out of his final warm-up match before Wimbledon because of a sore hip. The world number one was scheduled to play at an exhibition match in London tomorrow. The Briton is still expected to begin the defence of his Wimbledon title on Monday, but will be short of practice heading into the championships. Murray has only played one grass court match this year, suffering a shock first round defeat by world number 90 Jordan Thompson at Queen's. In your top stories from across the world, China's President Xi Jinping arrived in Hong Kong on to mark its 20th anniversary of Chinese rule as the city went into lockdown with a massive security blanket ahead of celebrations and protests on July 1st. The highly symbolic visit, Chinese President Xi Jinping's first since becoming leader in 2012, comes amid an increasingly tense political climate. Official celebrations are planned, as well as large protests from pro-democracy and pro-Beijing camps. At the airport, he spoke about three goals for his three-day visit, to express his well-wishes, to pledge Beijing support for Hong Kong, and to plan the city's future. Britain returned Hong Kong to Chinese rule in 1997 under a one-country, two-systems formula which guarantees wide-ranging autonomy and judicial independence not seen in mainland China. Tensions between Hong Kong and China have intensified amid concern and resentment over Beijing's growing interference in the form of British colony. Amid the diplomatic crisis in Qatar, its Foreign Minister Sheikh Mohammed Abdullah Al Thani has condemned its Gulf neighbours for refusing to negotiate over their demands for restoring air, sea and land links to the island. Qatar has been presented with a list of demands by its Gulf neighbours, which the Saudi Foreign Minister on Tuesday called non-negotiable. Qatari Foreign Minister Sheikh Mohammed Al Thani said the stance was contrary to the principles of international relations. US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, who has sought to resolve the crisis, also acknowledged that some elements of the list would be very difficult for Qatar to meet. Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Egypt accuse Qatar of aiding terrorism, a charge it denies. With Donald Trump being elected as the U.S. president world, the world seemed to have almost forgotten about former U.S. President Barack Obama and his family. However, the Obamas gained their usual popularity with vacationing in Indonesia currently. Former U.S. President Barack Obama and his family are enjoying a holiday in Indonesia, spending time whitewater rafting and visiting temples. 
He arrived with his wife and two daughters on the island of Bali before visiting an ancient Buddhist temple in Java yesterday. Obama is a popular figure in Indonesia where his holiday has received saturation on press coverage. Barack Obama is due to meet Indonesian President Joko Widodo in his place tomorrow. And your weather forecast is coming up next after this break. Thank you, Indivari, and welcome to the Weather Centre. Now, starting off with temperatures over the next 24 hours, we can expect warm weather to the east of the island between 23 and 32 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, southwest part of the island can expect rain, particularly in the western, Sabragamo central and northwestern provinces and in the Gaul and Madra districts. Now, heavy showers can also be expected over most parts of the northern province, accompanied by strong gusts of wind at 50 km per hour. Let us now take a look at the city-by-city -city forecast. And that's all from your prime time news at 9. But before we leave you, we'd like to take you to the picturesque rising sun from the top, Sripa the mountain. Thousands of devotees of all religions annually make the pilgrimage. We'll leave you with that. Have a pleasant evening and stay safe. Good night. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Adhavarana 24-7.